the Paso Jao and it is beautiful um, and it's a it's a beautiful climb it's a hard climb and I'm struggling this morning gotta be honest uh, I think maybe it's a combination of the uh, altitude uh, because we're quite high up here I think we're probably at about 1800 uh, meters something like that uh, and I think the altitude coupled with the climb coupled with the early morning coupled with not feeling as fit as I should be I'm finding it quite hard the top of the Paso Shell it was a struggle I made it Coals of the Dolomites completed and only 40 miles but another tough day gotta be honest uh, at breakfast this morning somebody said to Ian one of the other guys are you doing the classic route or the challenge route and he said well I'll start off bold but I'll probably end up a wuss well you can call me a wuss because I did the classic route as well as did a few others let's be honest uh, we turned out of the hotel, went up a couple of hundred metres, turned left and headed straight on to the Paso Giao. And I struggled, got to be honest. Uh, I did uh, four miles or whatever it was to the top of the Paso Giao and it's not far. Uh, and I needed a gel to get me up there. Now the scenery is absolutely breathtaking. Now whether that breathtaking is what led to taking my breath, I'm not sure. I think it's a combination of the elevation uh, because you're on about 1800 to 1000 meters, something like that, uh, plus your climbing, plus the fact is I'm not as fit as I was and I don't quite understand why. Uh, I didn't do nearly as much training for the Raid Alpine or the Raid Pyrenees, but I managed that just, it was a struggle, but I managed it. Uh, I've done a lot more training for this, I've lost quite a lot of weight, uh, I'm a lot fitter, I'm a lot stronger, and I'm struggling, I can't understand it. But, well, it's supposed to be a holiday, so I'm not going to complain too much. A little bit disappointed, but, well... I guess you've got to listen to your body and my body is telling me that you're having a laugh he's having a laugh we'll see what happens tomorrow anyway after the Paso Jao we uh, descended a, a lovely descent but a lot of hairpin bends so you're on the brakes most of the time and you can't really get up a lot of speed because you're taking uh, a lot of care um, and then we carried on through a through, um, couple of villages whose name escapes me and on to the Paso Campolongo. Uh, we stopped uh, just at the base of the Campolongo for uh, a drink and a snack uh, and then we carried on to the top of the pass. Um, again, not that tough a climb but feeling quite tough and they're certainly steeper than the climbs in the uh, Alps and the Pyrenees. In the Alps and the Pyrenees, you don't tend to get more than about six or seven or eight percent on average. They're long climbs, yes, but they're not steep. And here, Jesus, they are steep. Anyway, got to the top of the Paso Campolongo, uh, about half a dozen of us there, and we stopped. Um, rather, um, unfortunate incident with the waiter well not unfortunate but on the menu they had uh, frankfurter with side dish well my uh, my italian is not good to be honest uh, and they speak a bit of german there but they they didn't fancy my german and um, all i wanted to know was what was the side dish well i i couldn't find out what the side dish was 
So then I said, can I just have a frankfurter uh, with bread, which I thought would be a nice uh, combination. Um, anyway, the waiter said, we don't do bread, which I thought was a bit odd. Um, he said, we only have this bread. Uh, and he showed me some bread, which looked a lot like bread to me. So I said, OK, I'll have uh, frankfurter with bread. Well, he wasn't happy with that because he, he said, that's not on the menu. You can have a frankfurter with a side dish, but you can't have frankfurter with bread. Now, David, who's the Spanish, uh, Spanish speaking guide, also speaks some Italian and, and some English, um, helpfully tried to translate. But to be honest, he couldn't really get to a satisfactory conclusion either. Anyway, in the end, the waiter said, OK, you can have bread and you can have a frankfurt. Although I don't think he did it with a great deal of grace. So that took about 10 minutes. And meanwhile, the rest of the party were getting increasingly uh, pissed off and in increasingly hungry waiting for their food. Anyway, they finally ordered. And then about 10 minutes later, the waiter came back and said, we haven't got any frankfurters, which I thought was taking the piss, frankly. So I had a pizza. Um, didn't fall into the old pizza pepperoni trap, which I did yesterday. Uh, I asked for a pizza salami, spicy salami, diavolo, and that's what I got, and very tasty it was too. So then we descended from the Campolongo, uh, which was a, a lovely descent because fairly straight, hardly any traffic, um, very few hairpin bends, so you could get up a, a decent pace, and so that was really lovely. Uh, went through Corvara, um, where a lot of the gang from the old Portlands are staying for the Maratona at the beginning of next month. Uh, carried on through, and continued descending, and then a little climb uh, up through, I think, San Cassiano, something like that, to our hotel, which is called Hotel Stores, and a very nice hotel it is too. They have a swimming pool, apparently, although I haven't found it. Um, the man very kindly said we could take our bikes uh, down to the basement in the lift, uh, which we did, only they didn't fit in the lift, so we went down the stairs. Unfortunately, I stood down my, still had my sunglasses on, the stairs were quite dark, I couldn't see a bloody thing, but luckily, the uh, gentleman was very kind and helped me down with the bikes and very nice, well-equipped storeroom they have there. So went back up, very nice room, uh, washed some clothes, hung them up. Uh, there's a thunderstorm, which you might be able to hear. Actually, no, there's no thunder at the moment. Um, had a bath, uh, got changed, made this video. See you next time.